Hello and welcome back to NECC Playoff League of Legends. Uh, we're going into game two here, here in the pro draft. Uh, St. Clair able to pick up game one, uh, basically just outscaling Grandview from yeah. what we could tell. Um, bands here, very similar bands. We're seeing three jungle bands actually from St. Clair this time initially. Um, and then, yeah, same bands on the other side. Ooh, the Annie guy come out? I'd like to see the Annie, yeah. So we are going to get the Annie band. I like that. And we are going to see the Yumi band for St. Clair this time around. So mm -hmm. it'll be interesting to see whether that means JVU is forced to ban it out or if they'll leave it up and St. Clair maybe wants to take it. Uh, we'll see how that one works out. They are going to opt to ban the Yone. Oh, and they gonna are going to yeah, take it. Instalock Yumi first pick. Nothing too surprising. Nautilus going to come out again. Uh, honestly, that was a very solid pick for yeah, them last game. The Nautilus so. definitely putting in a lot of work. Um, those engages were really on point, so. Yeah, we're going to see the Gwen left up too. It was, I thought he did pretty well on it, obviously. I think the team around him did pretty well on it, so not too surprising to see that there. But it does mean fresh not on this Yumi too. is going to be very, very strong. Um, I'm not looking for the Ash this game. I don't think Yumi and Ash pair very well together because they are so susceptible, especially with a hard engage bot lane like the Maokai is. So I think we're going to see uh, Barlow on something that's not Ash this game. Syndra, like we said, mages are definitely going to be a priority pick. Um, I wouldn't be surprised to see Zephyroth on a mage too, now that this Yone has been banned out. Um, I'm not exactly sure what he plays, though. Um, he's played a pretty good Orianna uh, when okay. we saw him, and a pretty good Syndra, but Syndra is picked up, so it should be maybe something new we'll see in the mid lane here for Zephyroth to pick up. We are going to find out here in just a second. No, Hecarim, Hecarim is going to be the choice, and Hecarim Yumi. Yumi Hecarim. Oh, boy. Oh, wow. That's and Ezreal, Ezreal to add to the trouble. Yeah, this is going to be a, a Yumi game if I've ever seen one. And we saw how much damage a hacker of Yumi can do <laughs> against St. Clair and with St. Clair. So this being locked in, you know, a lot of things change in the preseason. Yumi doesn't. <laughs> I can't even do it. Like, what is uh, this? First two picks, too. Like, not even trying to hide it. No, nope, they're just going all in on the Yumi strat. And, I mean, it's a pretty good horse or yeah. pretty good horse to hitch your wagon to. I think Yumi is undeniably one of the best supports in the game. And despite all the item changes, despite everything that's gone on in the preseason, I think Yumi has stayed strong. And we are going to see a Kindred pick here for GVU. So that is actually an E-Hug special um, that he is very, very well known for. So we does get picked here. And actually, I actually didn't realize we didn't even see the Jax not get banned in that first rotation and yeah. didn't get picked up for sank there so that's a very very interesting choice. that's actually true we are used to seeing jacks almost like perm i mean still banned but usually he is perma banned in almost that first three almost yeah. every single game uh so kind of surprising they did decide that the yone was more more of a threat to them i guess yeah and we did see i feel like the silas an interesting ban because Zephyrot wasn't performing too well on it and isn't necessarily uh, the greatest pick in preseason, but does have that very, very high priority ban here in uh, in the first rotation. So we are going to see a couple of top yeah. lane bans for St. Clair, or for GVU against St. Clair. We had Jax and Mordekaiser taken off the board. Aatrox still available, so we'll see maybe if Ricky wants to go for that. Yeah, we saw the Silas ban last game as well. Uh, I don't know, maybe, they, maybe it's just a bad matchup for their mid laner or something. Um, Mordekaiser Band going to come out. Uh, does does Rookie play Mordekaiser? I mean, he played one, and it was an okay game. It wasn't incredible. So okay. um, it is just a solid pick, yeah, so I feel it, like that's probably why. Okay, yeah. So, it, by the way, it is if you're all confused about it, it is preseason patch for League of Legends specifically. So um, they are. it isn't preseason for NECC. It's playoffs for NECC, but League is in uh, League of Legends. Patch 11.33 is what they call the preseason patch because it is where they put out a whole bunch of new items, a whole bunch of new runes, uh, a bunch of map changes, just to spice things up and to give a new flavor to League looking forward to next season. So it's why a lot of these uh, strats and stuff that we talk about going into, like, going into the playoffs from the regular season completely change. Yeah, yeah. Essentially, Riot decides, uh, they basically decide their direction for the game yeah. in the new year, essentially. Um, so now after their world is done, uh, we're here in playoffs, uh, but they're making all of their big changes to the game. Um, yeah, so, so we basically just have to play around them. Victor is going to be locked Victor. in here for Zephyroth. I don't think we've seen him play Victor at all this season, but we have seen Ricky's Darius, and that is scary. <laughs> we and have indeed seen Darius with Darius. Yumi on top of him. That's so much yeah, healing. Yeah, their team right now, wow, they, they've definitely got that like chunky threat 
Yeah. The only problem I think they are lacking is hard engage. You have the Hecarim yeah. who go, does give uh, a decent amount of engage, but it's nothing, no hard CC that they're able to pop except for his ultimate. So I think for me, they're going to struggle to initiate these fights. And Kai'Sa going to be the last pick here. So they look over to GVU. I think that means it's got to be a Karma top then. Uh, yeah, I'm assuming Karma top. Considering the Maokai was hovering the Nautilus before, I'm assuming they just wanted to get that support pick out of the way first. Um, but, I mean, Maokai top Karma support, all the, like, I mean, you can't flex them yeah, if they decide sure. that the matchup is better or worse. And maybe there's better items for Maokai top uh, that could allow them possibly. to stay I, alive longer. I know Maokai support was very strong yeah, pre-patch, um, so I wouldn't be surprised if he's still pretty strong. Uh, considering support rooms haven't been changed too much and the hard engaged supports just got buffed even more. Yeah. Um, I, actually, I'm pretty sure we saw last time these teams played, or maybe it was against a different team, but we saw Ricky play Darius into a Karma and it just smashed the Karma. <laughs> like, it smashed the Karma because if you have EL come up there, gank early on, the Darius has such massive threat on you. If he takes Ghost, if he walks up on you, lands a hook, you can't slow, you can, yeah. you can root him. But he will be able to take you down if he has some jungle help. So I'm looking uh, for Darius to kind of yeah. shove this lane forward, try and make some room for himself here in the early game, and allow Yig to get ahead because we saw what ridiculous damage he was doing on that hack room, you mean the last series, and this one I don't think is going to be any different. Yeah. <laughs> I like how they went with a scaling comp again. Uh uh, Hecarim. Okay. <laughs> yeah, so I think they just mistakenly took yeah. the Hecarim little, there. So. A <laughs> little bit but of yeah, a misclick there. It happens. Um, but yeah, what I was going to say is they're taking... St. Clair's taking another scaling comp, but in a very different direction this time, right? Instead of going for like those high damage auto attackers um, who are kind of scaling late into team fights, you're kind of seeing like... I mean, you're seeing Darius. He's always like... He's that 1v1 threat in the top lane. Um, and then you're seeing Hecarim, who is like, they're putting their, like, again, they're putting their carry in the jungle, uh, but in a very different role this time. Yeah, for sure. And I mean, I don't think whatever he had plays, I think he's excellent at. He's, he's yeah. arguably one of the best junglers in the league. We've seen him um, not only do better than the other jungler, but a lot of times just smash the other jungler. Ahead in CS, ahead in gang presence, ahead in lane presence, while being ahead in farm, like, it just... It blows the mind how good he is at playing this jungle role. And I think it makes everyone else on the team look uh, so much better, especially these solo laners. So uh, I think with his rise, Zephyroth's moved up too. Uh, but I mean, looking at this game number two, on, me, on the Hecarim has the Yumi for the support that he's going to need in a lot of these ganks. And I think if they can get ahead here, it is going to be so hard for this team, for uh, Grandview, to try and come back in this game because... You have a lot of scaling. You have the Kaisa, you have Kindred. Um, you just don't really have that early game threat that this Hecarim is going to have. And if he can somehow uh, invade this Kindred jungle, make life horrible for her, which I expect him to be able to, uh, mm -hmm. I just don't really see a good way, other than objective bounties for <laughs> Gravity yeah. to come through. Um, yeah, I, yeah, I don't see them. I don't see them out. I don't see them beating St. Clair's early presence, essentially. Yeah. And, but at the same time, can you scale against the Hecarim Yumi? Like, if uh, he gets the lead, if Ehug somehow gets a lead, uh, or a lead here, it, it could just be the game. It, yeah. it very much could be. Um, also, we are seeing the uh, the Victor come out from Zephyrot. Uh, that's going to give them the Arcane buff. It actually gives them 150% uh, more damage, true. according to Riot. Yep. Uh, that was a joke. Makes sense. Not makes true. Makes sense. <laughs> but... Yeah, the Kaisa pick coming out, uh, probably going to be a pretty passive bot lane. Well, I mean, um, it's going to be passive everywhere, right? Because yeah. you have, like, a Karma who's not going to be yeah. ahead of this Darius. You have Syndra, Victor, which is pretty even. And then you have Kaisa, Maokai, which isn't really going to be too much of a threat in the bot lane there. Yeah. I mean, Maokai with the Ever Shroud actually could do some decent damage, which is the one thing that I'm watching out for. Because if he manages to get on top of the Ezreal, which is not going to be easy... Um, but if he does yeah, manage to do it thing. and catch him out, that Evershot is going to be doing so much bonus damage to him, and he can burst him out pretty easily. Mm -hmm. Also, uh, Barlow picking the Ezreal here, uh, it lets him just kind of sit back and scale. It also lets Fresh just kind of hop off and go with Ehug yeah. if he needs to for a bit. If there's a gank mid, if there's a gank top, some objective, right? You want to group up at Rift Herald, you can just leave Barlow bot, yep. right? And just have Ehug hop or have a Fresh hop on Ehug wherever he needs to go. Um, and then with all that movement speed, I mean, you're back in the bot lane in no time. Yeah, that's the advantage of playing the Hecarim with Yumi is so much extra speed, so much extra movement around the map. And, I mean, it 
depends how this dragon priority is going to go between these teams. I would like to see one of these new souls. I think they're so much uh, more exciting than the old ones, and I yeah, think for if sure. we get to see them, it makes things so much more interesting, especially with the hex because you imagine this Hecarim speeding to the hex gate and then invading your jungle. And then being able to clear it so fast and walk going back to that, like it's yeah. it's going to be such a nightmare for Kindred, right? Because with these hex gates, if they come become available, it's so much more mobility. And I mean, with if it's a chemtech one, there's going to be a Hecarim sitting in that shroud in yeah. the jungle. He's going to be on the <laughs> other side yeah. because of the thing with chemtech, right? Is like you get to see vision of the entire camouflage part of the jungle. So Hecarim could be on the other side of the jungle. He's going to see you and he's going to be able to move to you in half a second. Wait, the team that gets the soul gets vision. Well, no, no. If you're the... if you're in the vision of the chemtech, like shroud in the jungle, if you see the entire the shroud. shroud. You can see. Oh, okay. Yeah. So like he could be at the one corner of the shroud by his base, and then you could be trying to leave the jungle on the other side, and you're just given full vision inside exactly. of there. Oh, yeah. Okay. So you can see him coming, but he can also see you. And when Hecarim sees you, he starts charging. You're just yeah. you're just done for. <laughs> what are you gonna do? Run away? Come on, he's got four legs. <laughs> so one too many. He's got a cat on top of him too, so he's actually got eight <laughs> legs. There's no outrunning that. But I mean, for St. Clair, you get this Hecker and Yumi, you get the Ezreals for the safety in the ball lane again. And I, I really just think they're going to be able, if they can win this early game, I think they're going to be able to win this one. If it goes late, I think if Kindred and Kaisa can scale really, really hard, there is a chance they can win. But I just feel like it's going to be so tough because they don't mm -hmm. have... Uh, a committed tank, right? Because Maokai, he does go sort of tanky, but he mm. has to get Imperial Mandate first, so he doesn't really get a lot of the tankiness, and he's going to go Ever Shroud second, which gives you a little bit, but it's not a uh, significant amount, right? So I feel like it's going to be so hard for them to actually get tanky stats, and if Hecarim walks into your backline, there's no one really to peel your carries for you. Yeah. What? Is Ever Shroud a mythic? Oh, yeah, wait, it is a mythic. So he can't, yeah. he can't get... He, he... Imperial he essentially, mandate. yeah, he, he has to oh. choose. Interesting. So, yeah, now I want to see what build he is actually going to decide for. Because yeah. should he choose the Ever Shroud, uh, it kind of means he already has to lean more tanky. He's going to go towards yeah. that engage position. But if he does go for the traditional Maokai support that we've seen for the past year or so and goes Imperial Mandate, then he's losing that tankiness. How does the whole team kind of yeah. stack up? Uh, it's definitely going to be interesting to see because we could also see the karma kind of offset some of that tankiness if they yeah. decide to build that way. And karma, you have yeah. so karma, you have so much flexibility in how you want to yeah. go, right? So with the new preseason, you could even see. You know what you really good is that uh, the Fimble Winter item, mm -hmm. the one that converts mana, to mana health. Into, into health. Yes, so that could be very strong on her yes. too. Yeah, we could kind of see her build in sort of like a almost like a Galio kind yeah. of build way where you're just kind of this tanky AP like bruiser sort of. Uh, build yeah i think old karma used to have that kind of with the abyssal mask belt um and with rod of ages back in the day you had that ability to get the uh stats you need plus the hp to try to stay tanky so i wouldn't be too surprised to see the karma try and take advantage of those new items in that way but that's the fun thing about preseason patch right is that there's so many new things that people yeah. can try out and there's so many options for a lot of these players to go that Going into a game, we really have no idea how it's going to turn out because there's so much variety in how they want to play it. Yeah, yeah. Like we saw last game, like a, a lot of builds are still relatively mm -hmm. the same to their core, but it's just the thought. Uh, it's it's us loading into this game here, waiting for the game, and the thought that there could be just some crazy build that they decide to pull out. Right, like yeah, like the Hecarim build probably going to be pretty standard. Uh, but maybe he texts in one new item, like, and and it's it's something we haven't seen before. Um, and, yeah, and it's, yeah, it's I just really, exciting as a league player. I really feel like the early game hasn't changed too much because a lot of the mythics stay the same, right? Yeah. Like, your core mythics, most of them stay the same. Yeah, you do have the crown uh, for the mid laners and the ever shroud for the supports. But other than that, a lot of them have stayed the same. But it's when you get to that, like, three, four item mark where you get these items, even the second item mark, where you get to these newer items that you can throw on champions that completely change how they play and what their stats are going to look like. So mm -hmm. I think early game probably going to be relatively the same as what we've seen, but mid game late game especially that's when you're going to see a whole lot of variety in the builds and that's when you get to see mm -hmm. coming these some of these crazy exciting builds um that people have come out that you're never expecting yeah yeah and like there's just there's so many new effects on these items yeah. uh like it is it's going to change the way some of these team fights play out in the end uh i mean we're seeing like we said a lot of the ap items have been changed like the ap items uh, like a lot of mages core build paths have been completely changed because Cosmic Drive now has a new passive. Like, um, what are the other ones? 
The, uh, the, I mean, you have the crown, the new one. The seraphs has got the yeah, new. Yeah, seraphs has gotten changed. Which is ability haste instead of AP. So that's, I mean, it changes. Obviously, I think a lot of the champions that would build seraphs probably are still building it. But uh, you got new items like the Fimble Winter too. So it is. Yeah, that's, that's the one. That's, um, that's I think, the last one I was forgetting. Oh, actually, Fimble Winter is melee only. So I don't know Ooh. if you'll build it on Karma specifically. Yeah, I mean, if it's melee only, you can't build it. But. Um, yeah, yeah. Other than that, I mean, it's just it's just exciting going into these games, honestly. Yeah, for sure. It, it just gives so much more life to a game because sometimes I feel like, especially when you get around to uh, the end of the season, when league uh, league as a whole has just kind of slowed up their patch process because they don't want to change too much looking into worlds. Yeah. Um, you get to this preseason patch and you're just like everything is totally different. There's so much variety, there's so much new stuff, and it kind of breathes a fret, a kind of breathe some fresh life into a game that yeah. a lot of times can get kind of boring and mundane especially yeah. at the end of the season when people are really grinding hard it, it kind of gives you a chance to try something new and it's always nice to have that yeah yeah and especially obviously throughout the ch throughout the season right there's there's always patches there's going to be big patches that are going to completely shake up the meta there's going to be small patches that are just hot fixes right uh but the thing is Throughout the throughout the season, it, it kind of like all accumulates into this meta at yeah. the end, uh, which is honestly usually pretty boring in my opinion, uh, because you've just been playing with it for so long, right? So the preseason comes and we have pages upon pages of patch notes to talk about. Oh, uh, just exciting to see. We get to uh, see the early game. <laughs> yes, yes, we are into the game. So here we go, Saint Clair up 1-0 in the NACC quarterfinals. Hopefully. Tech issues do not happen here, but we will let you know if they do. And I mean, for me, I think right now we are going to take a look at the runes real quick. We see first strike on Victor. We didn't even talk about that. We see first strike on Victor and Ezreal. So uh, and Ezreal, for those yes. who don't know, brand new rune. Uh, if you hit the enemy first, you get five bonus gold and then you get 10% of the bonus damage you do um, on top of your regular hits. So it does give you that extra gold. It's kind of kleptomancy-ish without the consumables yeah. kind of idea. So uh, I definitely like it. I think it's a really good replacement for Omnistone because whoever actually it, used that. Yeah, it was. <laughs> I, I would take that in ARAM games like as a joke. That was, was about it. It, yeah. it is. To be fair, Omnistone was a fun concept. But it was never going to be used in any. Yeah. Like, it was never a competitive enough really. yeah. rune where it, it was, would be useful. Yeah, you can't just have. Yeah, you can't have that level of randomness and and it be really consistent. Yeah, yeah. And we already see a lethal tempo for this Darius in the top lane, so definitely a change there. And we are going to yeah. see a first strike on Karma as well. So uh, I think it is a pretty good rune if you can find the right spot for him. You do see yeah. the Glacial on Maokai, so Dread Joker on the Nautilus had it last time, and he's going to have it on the Maokai again in this one. Yeah, Glacial Augment really seems to be that new tank rune now. I mean, it's you're going to see it on any of these engaged supports, really. Uh, most likely going to be taken on Leona as well, considering the amount of CC she has. Ooh, and, he pops and the Rick, ghost. Able to pop the ghost. He is going to go in. Flash is going to be taken, and that is, is going to be pretty good trade for Ricky there in the top lane he's going to be able to force the back out of the karma as well yeah it's really good because now karma going to be forced to be back to lane here to claim back that xp so already ricky garnering this vantage in top lane yes he didn't get the kill but he did get the tp as well as the flash so both summoners already burned there in the top lane for ricky and he only had to use the ghost so really good on him finding the early deep yeah, I I actually hadn't thought of Lethal Tempo Darius before, but I mean, it just makes him even more of a threat in the early game, yeah. especially someone like Karma. I mean, no mobility at all, other than a little bit of movement speed. Yeah, we do see in the ball lane here, obviously, uh, Ezreal, Yumi will be shoved in pretty hard by this Kai'Sa Maokai. Both junglers on the bot half, maybe looking for an early gank here, because... Um, you're talking about Maokai not going to be very tanky until he starts getting those items sacked up. We'll see what he decides to go, whether he decides to go in here, man. But that's going to be a catch here on a fresh. Going to be knocked back, trying to get back into Barlow here, but not going to have the, not going to be able to. Ignite going to come down. First blood over for Platypus there. So the Ignite does go down into Maokai, but he will not go down. And that's first blood over for Grandview University. Yeah, exhaust and Ignite coming out there from fresh. That is two sums down in the bot lane. Um, also, this bot lane has no heal as well because of the, just the CC threat, uh, Barlow gonna take cleanse instead so yeah ganks are definitely gonna be an option here for eric zhang on this kindred yeah and i think there obviously we did see um fresh popping out a couple times just to get some poke down 
onto the Maokai. Good job by uh, Dread Joker realizing that. And as soon as he popped out to try and get another auto down, he yeah. eat him. And the Glacial Slow just stopped the Yumi from being able to back up towards the turret. She was so close yeah. to actually getting there, but just a couple of steps too far. And they were able to take advantage of it. So a one kill lead now in the bot lane here. We're going to see Kaisa get the Longsword and the Pickaxe on the back, which is pretty good. And uh, we'll definitely have to manage here over Barlow to start us off. Yeah, Barlow is going to have a, quite a boring laning phase now. I mean, I don't see them stepping up very much. He's mostly probably just going to be sitting back. Uh, it's it's looking like a scale in the bot lane here for St. Clair. Uh, meanwhile, Grandview may be able to press his lead a little harder, you know, before that Hecarim gets online with the Yumi involved. Uh, as we're seeing right now, Hecarim still finishing up his clear. Yeah, and he's actually oh, clearing oh. pretty slowly here compared to this yeah. Kindred. They are even, but usually you have this Hecarim uh, able to get ahead of the Kindred in terms of farm. But right now, I think he did take a couple seconds there, maybe looking for gank and bot after the kill went over. Not to go for it. He's going to find Eric here with the Predator Boots in the top lane, but going to just back off. Doesn't want to fight that one. They will clear a couple of wards here. So early game, pretty relatively quiet so far. Oh, uh, never yeah. mind. I take it back. Engage coming out from Ricky. E-Hug is going to come in. Ooh, but Learning Braid is able to just walk away from that. E-Hug was just a little late there. Uh, he also didn't have the E to, like, really push her back into Ricky. Um, but we may be looking at a dive here. Kindred still up in this top lane. Gonna yeah, both they, junglers moving in. This could be dangerous here. They do realize that Kindred is going to be there. Oh, they don't actually. Pink War going to come down. Oh, that's a lot of damage on E-Hug. You're going to try to walk away. Third Mark going to come through. Gonna knock him back, but he will go down here in just a second. That's gonna be Learning Brain. Picking up a kill in the top lane here. Zephyrock gonna go for some damage. Gonna drop the ult, actually. Not gonna be enough damage on to uh, Kiwi here. So, in the end, just another kill in the top lane. And uh, now a lead here for Grandview. Almost opened up to 1,000. Yeah, just about to hit a thousand gold up as we're hitting the six minute mark. Barlow gonna go in on Platypus here. There is no Maokai to be found. Is she able to run away? The Kaisa is able to make it to tower. Barlow getting some nice poke down. Uh, as the Maokai is going to move back to bot lane. Does also force out the exhaust here. So no defensive summoners available now for the side of Grandview. So bot lane going to have to be careful here. Ricky going to go for the hook. Oh. Not going to be able to hit it though. So in the end, nothing really happening here around the map. No jungle has taken this dragon yet either. Um, I expect a couple of resets out here sometimes soon for the dra for the junglers and then look to maybe take this dragon early on. We already see a couple pings going down towards it. That's what I think the next goal is going to be for the junglers. Yeah, I could definitely see it. Uh, we just saw the reset come out from the Kindred here. He is going to be walking back. Uh, he's, he is going to grab his red buff, it looks like, and then most likely path bot side. Um, Ricky also ugh, being harassed under tower here by this Karma. He has been getting over, going for very, very aggressive trades. And you saw a couple times he kind of overextended into the minion yeah. wave to try and land hooks. Hasn't been able to do it. The tower so. as well. Yeah, and even taking a tower shot or two there, so... He does have a farm advantage here in the top lane. Will back. Doesn't then have TP to catch this wave. But uh, it does mean they will get an advantage there in the bot lane vision-wise. Until it's played out by the Maokai. So in the end, still pretty even. Up a K gold, still holding on GVU. But pretty even elsewhere across the board. Yeah, I mean, the sheer threat of the vision on Ehug there is going to force him off of his blue buff. Um, and we are going to see Fresh actually have to go up into the jungle and support him there. Um, so... Game has been paused. We should be back fairly soon. Yeah, we'll get back to you guys on what that pause is. But I mean, so far in the early game, uh, we did talk about how much St. Clair needs to get ahead in this early game. That was key for them right now. GPU actually taking advantage. They are up 2-0 in kills, up a K in gold. So um, definitely not going to St. Clair's plan. And that's really good when you're looking at what... Oh, okay, so we're getting a little bit of technical issues on our side here. So hopefully those can get resolved sometime soon. But uh, I was going to talk to early game. Um, the Kindred and the Kaisa, if they can stall for a long time, they can scale and become very, very powerful in these fights. So um, sure. St. Clair need to start pressing an advantage here in the early game. Try and get this Hecarim Yumi, start roaming around the map, going for ganks, and, and turn their, law, their early game deficit into a lead. Yeah, and especially with the lead this Kindred has built up, I mean, provided we're just seeing the marks come out, we saw uh, the Kindred was able to grab the Scuttle Crab there uh, with the help from Ricky having to reset. Um, so, I, yeah, they could definitely scale this one out. I mean, Ehug, he, he's behind now. 
Yeah. That's that's the problem for St. Clair here, really. Uh, E-Hug's behind now. He's being forced out of his own jungle. We're seeing the mid laner, the top laner, rotate into E-Hug's blue side jungle. Um, whereas uh, the Saints mid laner, kind of nowhere to be seen. He's more so just uh, being shoved in, really. So uh, I, I don't really know how this is going to play out, uh, especially with this lead here from Grandview, because uh, they definitely could take this all the way. Yeah, I think what needs to happen is Dericky needs to find an advantage on top of them, whether it's through a couple of ganks from E-Hug, whether it's by taking a couple of turret plates, getting a, a, a half an item or so ahead of this Karma. That's when he can shove her out and start roaming with his jungler. But if this Karma keeps it up, which all credit to her so far, she has definitely been doing um, a lot of harass, a lot of poke. Yeah. Uh, when she starts picking up items and her poke becomes stronger and more effective, that's when it's going to be very, very tough for me to see uh, St. Clair actually getting an advantage for this Hecarim. And Hecarim Yumi, yes, when it's ahead, it is one of the most deadly things in the game. But if it can't get ahead in the early game, he's going to run at you. And yes, he's going to be able to do a decent amount of damage to you. But if he can't burst you out in two seconds, he's just going to be running along there super squishy. So uh, I think you can definitely take advantage of that. Yeah, and that's exactly what we saw when he didn't have the vision in that tri-bush near top lane. Uh, and he walked straight into the Kindred and he just got bursted down so fast. I mean, he was half health before he was out of the tri-bush. Um, and yeah, I think without that Yumi there, um, especially, but yeah, also just, he moved into that jungle, uh, with the Karma knowing, and the Kindred was able to position around that. And I mean, right now, not too bad for San Clair. Yes, they are down okay, but it's not a significant gold advantage right now uh, in the early game. I think definitely still come back. Well, especially if they can find a good fight around an objective like the Dragon or like the Rift Herald. So for them, it's not all doom and gloom. Yes, they are behind, but it's definitely still come backable. But for me, um, the later on this game goes, the more advantage Grandview is going to have because they will have the better scaling than St. Clair will. Um, St. Clair is going to have the Ezreal for the late game, so it's not uh, going to be horrible. And they'll have the Victor, who will do some decent damage. But you see Kaisa, Kindred, and uh, Syndra in the late game. That is a scary combo. Yeah, for sure. And I also do want to talk about this bot lane because, uh, like we said, obviously that Maokai is going to be a little more uh, aggressive than the Yumi in the early game as well. Uh, but we're seeing a lot of back and forth from the bot lanes. I mean, obviously, uh, Maokai was able to pick off uh, that gray W onto the Yumi there to start off uh, early level three, I believe it was. Um, but as we're seeing that, we're also seeing Barlow and Fresh able to push the Kaisa out of the lane there. Um, and able to make some space to safely CS. Uh, so I still think bot lane is anyone's game as well. Yeah, for sure. So we will be getting back to the game here in just a little bit, hopefully. So uh, we'll find out when that happens. But, uh, I mean, it's been an interesting series. A lot of technical issues, unfortunately. Um, so it, it hasn't really been a great ride so far in these playoffs. But here we go. We are going to get back in the game here. Pause has been lifted. And across the board, farm pretty even for a lot of places. Just top lane right now gonna be a little bit of a difference maker and i mean darius first bought merc treads which obviously you are playing into a kindred is very necessary but it does mean it takes kind of a lot of that early game power that you normally would have with something like a chain sword away yeah that is also true there we are gonna see the kindred slowly creeping up into the top lane here going for the gank just through the lane actually um yeah she's looking at the lane gank yeah, here yeah away here this could be very potent here if Ricky isn't careful. It does have the Merc Treads though, so we'll be able to negate a little bit of the CC that this Karma is going to provide. Going to go for the chain Link here. We'll go for the hook. Going to start the engage off here, but Ricky smells something in the water, doesn't like it, and will be able to back off here. Meanwhile, the ball is going to be an engage here onto Barlow. Ignite going to come down very, very early. Going to have to flash out here. Platypus barely going to survive. Going to flash away from the ult there. We'll stay alive, but Hecarim going to be here to finish him off. Yeah, going to find Platypus ult going to come through as well. Going to force the guy back, and that's going to be another kill over a double for e hug there and that is the way to roar back into this one yeah and he's moving towards that dragon right there i mean perfect play you see the kindred top you're able to pick up that double kill bot and you get the dragon off of it uh we are going to see the rift herald going to come out here from Ramview as well uh yeah i don't i don't think St. Clair can really contest that honestly no they're going to trade it and i mean right now it's dragon is okay but i think the rift herald definitely would be better for them but in the end they still have ended up picking two kills alongside this so the hacker room will be nice and strong and once that yumi start topping onto them and they're able to get out onto the map that is going to be a very very strong jungle that they're going to have on their side yeah definitely and as we can see the gold lead has actually been shifted back to st Clair after that uh after that skirmish in the bot lane but the Rift Herald, now on Grandview's side, uh, definitely able to even that out. This is scary, though. Ricky's on the wrong side of this tri-bush, and Kindred is going to be in this jungle. She is farming up the Raptors right now. 
Not going to be able to get to that top lane in time. Ricky going to be able to walk all the way up towards the bushes. And he will be able to walk out here. So nothing too crazy. Obviously, it is going to be very, very hard to take this Darius down. Especially because um, Karma is going for more of that supportive build. Has picked up the Bangle Glass here. So uh, not the most damage-inducing build. Plus, the uh, Merc Treads mean that she's not really going to be a threat to Darius anytime soon. Uh, yeah, I think we're just gonna we're just gonna see Ricky do his little harass thing. Um, obviously, he is gonna get poked out in a lot of sense by the Karma. Um, but if the Karma is having to use her ultimate on abilities that aren't Q, um, just based off of Ricky's damage here, then maybe he won't be getting poked out like that. As you can see, she has to run away as soon as he steps up, uh, losing so much CS off that too. We're seeing a 12 CS lead here from Ricky. But I think for me though, I look at Karma top, and it's Basically, right now, you're just kind of a support that's waiting to get to that mid-game yeah. where you can throw the shields and uh, the heals onto the members of your team that are going to be do dove on by this Hecarim, right? And, and, I mean, the nice thing is, too, is that Darius needs to get out early, but meanwhile, there's going to be a gank here in the bot lane. That's going to be a quick E out from Barlow. All going to come through from Platypus as well. TP Barlow going to go down very, very Zephyrod. early. A nice route there actually going to go down to Platypus. The double kill comes through, though. Couldn't get on a Zephyrod in time. Kindred going to come down and save him, so a clean double kill there. This could be more. Flash going to have to be forced at the Zephyrod here. He will survive. So in the end, two clean kills for Grandy. Yeah, wow. Two kills onto that Kindred as well. Uh, we could see the Rift Herald come out here as well, although a lot of St. Clair's resources are bought already. Um, and we already see Kivi moving back up to that mid lane while Zephyrod is kind of stuck here, but he's going to be able to get something there. Although Ricky is moving down through this river, he's pinging. Yeah, he sees he may be the going in on this. here. Kivi not aware of what's going on here. We'll get that. Hook's the level. Yes, he will land a flash. Oh, wow. Gonna get dunked anyway. It doesn't matter. Ricky yeah. can get ulted on, but those Merc Treads yeah. do save his life there. So Ricky gonna pick up the solo kill onto Kivi in the mid there and give himself a small advantage here in the top lane as well. Yeah, honestly, I like that play from Ricky, right? You see the Syndra leave, you assume she's headed back to mid lane. And knowing the karma is just going to run away, you, you you had mid for that kill. And grabbing the flash as well just adds to the deal, honestly. Yeah, and the fact that he had those Merc Treads actually is what saved him. He's down about 200 HP yeah. there after that ultimate. So um, smart buy there, was able to take advantage of it. Obviously, you're not seeing yourself going mid this early. But in the end, it is uh, and it's a small advantage for him. But two plates were taken in the top lane for that. So... And a Herald's going to drop as well. So they're trying to push this down. Hook is going to land, though. That means a couple turret shots are going to come down on the air. Gang here, no ult available, but doesn't want to go for the fight here. So a decent amount of damage down, but they will get the Herald pushed in anyway. E-Hug looking for him here. Has that Predator activated. Flash going to come through. No ult, but it will have to back off here. Root going to come through. That's so much damage on E-Hug, and he will go down. So E-Hug getting greedy on this Hecarim in the top lane. Not going to be able to get that kill. Ricky, maybe they want to go in on him. Syndra going to join. Ricky, nice dodge there on the Q. And he will survive. So in the end, another kill over for GBU. Yeah, Eric Eric Yang here in the jungle finding himself getting more and more fed uh, as the game goes on. And St. Clair is handing these kills to him. Honestly, they're, they're walking into his sights uh, and allowing that, that Kindred to just scale up even harder. The Maokai ult is going to come out to save them here in the bot lane. Fresh taking a lot of damage under tower, able to get back on the Barlow. Going to be able to... is able to pick up the kill on Platypus. Barlow... Gonna be able to pick up the kill on on the Maokai here as well. Ooh. And gets traded out by the minions. So that is a two for two in the bot lane. Yeah, that was an interesting interaction. All summoners burn there on everyone except for the flash on Maokai. So, I mean, a lot used for that fight. Obviously, uh, it is two for two. But more importantly, the Ezreal picked up both of those kills. So it did go on the right person. It does get this Ezreal ahead a little bit further in this bot lane than the Kai'Sa. And, I mean, right now, still gold pretty even on both sides. Again, we see GVU up about a K. Um, Dragon in St. Clair's favor right now. Next one is going to be up in 22 seconds. Uh, not quite sure what it is. It doesn't read on the spectator client just yet, so I'm assuming it's either a Hextech or a Chemtech. Um, yeah, we should be able to see it as they move in closer to the Dragon Pit here. Uh, I'm trying to peek on that wall. <laughs> yeah, it is Chemtech. It is Chemtech, Chemtech Drake. So. All right. Yeah, it'll be interesting here to see how they fight for it. Looks like both teams do want to commit right now. Karma is top. Does have the TP available, though. So we'll be able to join this fight here in just a second. But looks like Darius is going to just walk down here. Oh, this is bad, though. There's three people on top of him. Ricky, you stepped in the wrong bush. And he will go down very, very early. TP going to come through for the Karma as well. Barlow going to have to try and run away under his turret. But that's so much damage from this Kindred. Going to force him out. It looks like they maybe will go for the dive here. Not going to want to let him back out. 
But no, they're going to opt just take this Chemtech Dragon, get themselves uh, tied up here in Dragon 1 apiece. Yeah, Chemtech Drake is a nice little stat boost to Grandview as well, uh, considering Ricky and Ehug how tanky they are going to get into the late game. Uh, it's definitely a nice Drake to have. Yeah, if you know, Chemtech Drake gives 5% uh, extra damage to uh, for you against people with more HP than you. So against tanky members, it is pretty effective. We are going to see a Mountain Soul here. So again, not getting the RNG on our favor. We're not going to see a uh, Hextech or a Chem Chemtech Soul, but... That's okay, we'll get him out in soul today. And I mean, for right now, we see Ehug on this Kindred and he is so good on it, right? But 302 for Eric Z Yang here. Really struggled on that Jarvan in the first game. I think that was kind of the major difference between these teams, but 302 on this Kindred is looking so good here in game number two. Yeah, 105 CS as well. He's farming up the jungle, like farming up a storm in the jungle, as well as having such map presence. Uh, to the point where he's able, he was able to get a, one drag, a rift herald, essentially take the top tower, uh, and also put so much pressure bot at the same time. A kindred, uh, he's definitely pulling through here for Grandview. Yeah, we see Maokai has now completed the item and is going to be the Ever Shroud, so that does give him that bonus damage as well as the tanky passive. He gets five uh, armor and magic resist for every item he's going to, every legendary item he's going to build. So. Uh, it does go for that tank hero instead of the Imperial Mandate, and I think it's pretty good, right? Because yeah. you have the Karma who is providing the support with this Moonstone built up, so you kind of need that front line to be able to peel for your carries, and I think he's going to provide a lot of that uh, ability to front line what uh, the Victor and the Hacker are throwing. Yeah, definitely. Ooh, Zephyroth a little bit out of place there in the top lane. Two members of GVU just sitting in the bush there, waiting for it. Air Gang going to pick up another kill. Possibly going to pick up the second Rift Herald. Yes, he is as a fight is going down here. Bot River. Ooh, Ehug going to come in. Platypus able to flash away. No, Ehug is too far forward. Also over the wall, but he's going to get caught up here. And that item already built means Kivi is going to get that kill. Ever Shroud is so strong here. And Barlow, no mana, is in the wrong spot. Fresh just going to leave him for dead. He's going to try to run away, but no, he's going to go down too. So that's going to be Dread Joker. Finding kill, almost paying with his life for it, though. But in the end, it is four down for St. Clair. Ricky going to find Eric Ziyang here, though. Going to go for the ult. But that will be an ult popped here for Eric Ziyang. Keep him alive here for a second. He gets stunned up here. Ricky will go down. He's going to heal up, but not going to be enough. Platypus going to take him down. And that is a delayed ace for GVU and definitely taking advantage here in the early game. Massive lead coming in for GVU here. We're seeing a perfect score on that Kindred. Not to mention the Kaisas now picking up kills. I mean, the Maokai is just in there. Barlow can't really seem to move in these fights, honestly. Um, he's just getting caught out with all of that CC from the Maokai. Yeah, Kindred this game. Eric Z Yang looking so good on this pick, playing so well. 5-0-3. Such a huge advantage here over Yug. And this is really the first time in a while that we've seen another jungler outclass uh, Ehug. It's just been better pathing, better objective taking, playing around their, the solo lanes a lot better. And uh, I mean, for me, it, it's very surprising, right? Because Ehug has just been such a dominant presence in so many of our games. Um, to see this kind of domination of another jungler is very surprising. And looking forward to game three, it's going to be interesting to see how the pick ban phase goes. Yeah, definitely. Uh, St. Clair actually might be able to pick up this Rift Herald instead as Kindred decided to move away from it uh, based on that team fight. They decided to rotate bot. Um, and they are going to pick that up. That it, Provided they get a, some value out of it, that can definitely help uh, even out the gold lead here that GVU has made. Oh, no. But Barlow, he's getting chased down in the mid lane. Root is going to come out. So much damage. Look, the Glacial Augment, he can't move. He can't move as Ehug is going to go in, also going to get knocked out. Ricky oh. able to hit a nice ultimate, going to pick up the first kill for St. Clair. Hook going to come out, ult reset, but not able to pick up the kill. Zephyrod in the end, going to get bursted down as well. <sighs> Unfortunate there for St. Clair. They almost were able to get back into that fight. Uh, but they were just too little, too late. Yeah, unfortunately, Ricky just didn't, wasn't able to get that flash over the wall like he needed to to get that alt reset. Because if he gets that alt reset onto Kaisa, I think this fight completely turns in their favor. I think they can definitely win it. But the fact that he goes down very, very early there is tough for them. And yes, a uh, big shot down over to Zephyroth there does get that seven or 850 gold shot down onto the, uh, Kendra. But in the end, everyone on this team dies. And I really think right now it's just going to be going to a game number three because. As Kindred, as Gwinsu's already built up almost on that third item as well. Kaisa already on two and a half items. And you look over to St. Clair, the Ezreal just on the Triforce. And Hecarim 
with the turbo chem tank doesn't even have uh, anywhere close to a second item so just a huge advantage right now for grandview and i think this most likely will be going to a game three uh, yeah, honestly, I, I I really think it was it was just that kill top lane that just kind of kickstarted this Kindred's entire snowball here. Um, and honestly, great by Eric Yang to be able to play off of that um, and realize that this this Karma is definitely a potent combo with the Kindred as well when they get onto those ganks. Not much the Darius can do as both of them just have so much mobility. And second or third Drake of the game. Gonna go to Grandview as well. Their second Drake. Yeah, and uh, if uh, observers could just scroll over the Kindred just to see how many uh, stacks she has on her passive, uh, on her player character herself when she shows up on the screen. Um, see if you can select her. I don't know if that works or not. No, it doesn't. Mm -hmm. Seven stacks oh, yeah, seven on her passive. Perfect, we can so. see it. If you look in the bottom corner there, just above our overlay, you can see her stacks there. So she does have seven stacks, slowly getting up there in stacks. Uh, Seven is still pretty good. Yeah. Ooh, this could be interesting though. Gonna go for the 1v1 here against Ricky. Close. Ricky gonna land a Q here, gonna go for the hook. Dunk gonna come through, Ooh. and that's not even a chance to pop the ultimate. Eric couldn't even get the one. Zephyrot TP. TP not necessary, Zephyrot. I got this one. Uh, yeah, he said true damage. There's a reason it's called true damage because it is truly gonna get you the kill. Ehug also able to pick up the kill there with some assistance uh, from the Yumi and the. And the Ezreal as well. Ooh, they're pinging this. They want to go for the Baron here. 21 minutes in. They're, the Darius here is not that close to it. So starting it off, it will take them quite a while to take this one. And there will yeah. be a contest here. So no jungler available just yet. But uh, they aren't taking it very fast. And it does they may mean... Be able to do that. I, I, I don't know. This is going to be tough. This is going to be tough for Sanctuary yeah. to do this. I, I, they definitely have the survivability to do the Baron. It's just the fact that they only picked up the two picks. And the death timers just aren't too long yet. Like, it's so much damage taken from the Baron now. They're slowly getting chipped out. Slowly, slowly, slowly. Zephyrok gonna move in closer here with Yumi on his back. Gonna get ulted out, and that is gonna be the first kill for, for Grandview. Ooh, Kiwi in a tough spot here. Barlow able to pick up the kill. Ricky is just in there, but he's gonna get bursted down by the Kindred. And it seems like that's gonna be the fight. Yeah, I think it was actually a decent call there for St. Clair. Yeah. I, what they wanted to do was they wanted to bait the Baron. They wanted to force people there and go for a fight. But the problem was, oh, never mind. I don't have time for that. Barlow going to find Eric's Yang here. <laughs> but there's going to be three members for St. Clair. The Blast Cone is available. Going to pop the alt here. Going to do a piece bit of damage. But going to back up here. Barlow just going to be able to survive. And so will the jungler. So in the end, just going to cost an alt from Eric's Yang. But, uh, I mean, he is very, very low. They're going to try for this Baron. But... This is dangerous. If St. Clair know this is up, they could definitely burst out this jungler yeah. very quickly. Yes, the Moonstone is available for Karma. She'll be able to heal Buzz out, but well, well they're not the going to get past. So. Ooh, Platypus. A lot of damage coming in onto E-Hug here. She is able to just run away, however. But I mean, you're like when you're seeing the Hecarim get like pushed out of his own jungle by their ADC, uh, I, you may have to consider the FF button here. Uh, I, I think it's definitely still very, very winnable. The problem I, is uh, this Kaisa is going to reset, get some items together, and we see the Kindred now at three items at eight hunts completed is just so strong. Uh, just look at the gold 4K spread, like, gold yeah. on the Eug here. And, and this oh is God. the thing that Eug does to other junglers, and it's now happening to him. So I yeah. think definitely early game, the struggles came through there. And because you didn't unlock this Hecker Mumi across the map early on, he is definitely going to struggle here. And I mean, yes, obviously, now that Smites are even, it is still going to be a 50-50 flip here at the Dragon very soon. But right now, big gold advantage, almost 5k for Grandview. I think they're definitely going to have uh, a definite big advantage here going into the Dragon fight. Yeah, Dragon coming up in a minute and a half. Uh, we're seeing a not too much Ooh, going on. Tower bounty. is able to grab. Oh, objective bounty is claimed. Those are 150, I believe, for out of two, 250. 250. 250. Um, so 250, a nice chunk of gold. Uh, still going to be a 4K-ish deficit for St. Clair. A little over that. Um, and we are going to see some resets here before the dragon. Yeah, I think it's 250, but it scales based on how behind you are. So it could be more. Honestly, not quite sure how much it is, but Zephyrot getting poked out here, but he's going to back off. Baron will be up here for this dragon, so I think more than likely St. Clair not going to go for this one. Don't want to risk walking into uh, Baron up members of Grandview here. And it is just a mountain soul. Yes, it is going to put them on soul point, but it isn't the actual oh, soul. No. 
Eric going to take quite a bit of damage there from wow. Zephyroth. So uh, now that he has the Ludens and the uh, Cosmic Drive built, he's going to be doing quite a lot and going to be packing quite a bunch. Yeah, not to mention uh, Victor himself also scales up later into the game as he, and he has arcane buff abilities. Too. Oh, he does have arcane buff. That's 150% damage. No wonder. <laughs> oh. uh, Dread Joker going to be moving in here, possibly looking for an engage. They're trying to zone St. Clair off here even before the dragon is already up. Um, although they're two tanky, somewhat tanky members are kind of split up from the team. Uh, E-Hug slowly moving Ooh, in. Double stun there, hit from the Syndra, and the ult is going to go off. Take off Zephyroth right at the starting of the round. Kindred ult going to get off. No one's died yet on, on uh, GVU side. And E-Hug also going to go down as well as Fresh. What can they do? Oh, Ricky able to hit a oh, nice pull. Ult is going to come out. He's Double alive. kill. He's still alive. Can he go in? Oh, oh my goodness, God. no shot. Just no shot. Just barely makes it out of there. He got it, Walk he got the quad. Oh. This is Penta, this is a Penta, Penta for, Ricky. for Ricky. This is huge, he's gonna have the dunk available in just a second, he's gonna get the Penta kill for Ricky. Holy smokes, Asterius is unstoppable. This man, no one can put him down, no one can stop him. <laughs> and St. Clair roaring back here, gonna take oh, the dragon wow. and take everything from GVU. Holy crap, what was that Ricky? I thought Ricky was already dead there in that fight. He hangs on with just a sliver of health. And of course that Darius Q gonna proc. And at that point he's at like half health. He's got the alt up. The burn from the passive is gonna be able to pick up the Syndra as he just chases down the last player. Wow. I I can't believe he lived there. The fact that he turned that fight around, that has oh. got to get you going if you're St. Clair. That is how you turn this game around, bring the gold lead to only 2k deficit. And I mean, for Ricky, up 3k gold now, gonna get a lot of items, but that was incredible play. And that is what we've been waiting for. He hasn't been here for two weeks. This is, he comes back and says, okay, we need to come back in this game. I'm gonna put it on me. I, pr I picked this Darius for a reason and he's showing us why. Yeah, he, he does not want to play a third game here. He's sick of the technical issues. He wants to move on. <laughs> yeah, they do have their work still cut out for them, though. They are still behind here, and that definitely yeah. is still a very, very strong squad from the side of <laughs> GVU that he has to face. Double but control word. <laughs> it's, it's a pentakill, and it feels so good for Ricky. And now that he's on three items, he it just seems like there isn't enough damage. You don't focus him down in a fight, he will be able to take advantage of this team comp. Yeah, and sure. the Maokai, because he doesn't have a ton of tanky stats, isn't going to be able to actually stop him. He does pick up that uh, Anathemas Ren 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 Oh, uh, the Maokai. A oh, Anath Anathemas? 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 Something I don't like that. To say it. Something uh, like that, anyway. But I wonder if he has that on Darius. Uh, yeah, I wouldn't be surprised. I'd Yeah, I'd say either Darius or Barlow at this point. Yeah, for sure. Um, but yeah, I wouldn't be surprised if it was on the Ricky because that bleed also does a lot of damage to a tank o yeah. over the course of a fight if he's able to get a few stacks off on you. Uh, that definitely does hurt. But yeah, basically what that Anathema's Chains item does, uh, slowly, uh, you basically designate a target on the enemy team and it slowly builds up damage resistance on yourself towards that target. Um, so definitely a, a kind of an, an anti-hyper carry item, right? If there's really only one threat on the enemy team, it's going to get nullified, but Barlow is able to make it out of there before he gets nullified himself. Does mean the Yumi R is burned. Won't have that available for this Baron fight in just 20 seconds. So good job there to pull that one out. Ricky gonna engage here onto Dread Joker. Dread Joker gonna chip a lot of damage down here. Hecarim gonna jump in the back line, but Ricky gonna find another kill here. Can he go for more? Gonna find Eric, gonna get the slow exhaust down as well. All still available, so he will go for that one. But does have the reset available? Looking for this final kill. Yeah, gonna claim it though. Still three alive here for JBU. Nice stun there to stop him, but that's gonna be an R down for Zephyroth. Zephyroth doing so much damage in this fight, they're gonna collapse here. Zanya's gonna be popped here on the, the Syndra to keep her alive for just a second here, but it doesn't matter. He's gonna go down anyway. Fresh gonna finish that one off. Just one member left here. Just the Kaisa trying to run away at 100 HP. And St. Clair claim the fight. And as soon as they claim this Kaisa, yeah, Ricky's gonna find him. Oh, she's gonna find the Yumi though. <laughs> but Yumi gonna but answer back. Yumi Fresh says, no, no, no. I can do it myself. <laughs> and that's gonna be another ace coming through. And St. Clair roaring back in this game in style. Yeah, and they are gonna start up this Baron here as Barlow just shoves this out mid. And yeah, they definitely have enough damage to do this. Um, Barlow. He's able to get a lot of damage on this tower as well. That's definitely going to help them out once this Baron gets taken. 
Um, because he should still be there once the Baron's taken, and he should have a little bit of time to get some damage out on that tower. Although we are seeing Kindred rotate, and yeah, Barlow's just gonna move out. Um, yeah, wow, what a turn for St. Clair in this game. It's weird for me, too, because you're talking about, like, St. Clair, if they don't get ahead early, <laughs> I think that Grandview is going to be able to come back mid-game and late-game. But right now, it just seems like there isn't enough peel to actually force St. Clair off yeah. of Grandview. Like, you have this Eha going in the back line, and with Fimble Winter and this Frozen Heart, the combo is you get extra mana on the Fimble Winter, so you get extra HP bonus. So he is yeah. so tanky that when he goes in the back line, he can survive for so long. And if you don't have someone consistently hitting him, like either the Kai'Sa or the Kindred, he's not going to go down anytime soon. So uh, I really do think they're playing this very, very well. Their team fights are very consistent, and that is the reason why they're turning this game around. Obviously, it's still very close here. He's going to catch two with the hook, and Ayumi on top of him is going to be doing so much for them. Dunk going to come through. One, Double. two, looking for more. Can he find the third here? No, going to hop over the wall. Going to find the third on a Dread Joker. He's going to go down flashing over the wall for it. Zephyr going to take down Platypus, and just a Kindred left. Flash going to come through. Another triple for this Darius. Ricky stamps his name on this game and says, no, we're not going to game three. We're going to end this one right here. That is going to be an ace, and that is going to be it. St. Clair going to take out JV here in just a moment. Absolutely amazing turnaround for these guys, and I can't wait to see what else they have in store here in the NECC playoffs. Oh, my God. Wow. <laughs> After picking up that Baron, they're able to pick up another fight and just close out the game. I... Great play here from St. Clair. I mean, Ricky, I, coming back after a two-week break and is just able to, like, single-handedly take back the game in one fight with one pentakill is what we just saw. And that's what we wanted from him from the beginning of the season, right? Ricky is the centerpiece of this team, and yeah, he was missing for a few weeks, and I mean... I felt like he wasn't really, he was kind of struggling there in that first game, but this second game was his coming out party. He turns the entire game around with a 2v5 pentakill. <laughs> Just absolutely smurfs yeah. on them. And that, that fight was so in their favor. The game was looking so lost for them wins that team fight they win the next one and they win the next one just great team play by all of them and i mean for me this is one of those games where you look back on and you say okay this is what we need to do looking forward in the rest of these playoffs because if we can play like that second game in the rest of this playoffs they can go and win it all yeah for sure and we are gonna have to wrap it up quite quickly here as we do have call of duty coming up next so stay tuned for that at 8 yeah. 30 uh but yeah league yes. of legends Looking great for St. Clair. We are going to be moving on into the semifinals. Uh, going to be playing the winner of University of Toronto and Durham, I believe. I did look at the schedule before. Yeah, Durham, Durham and UTM, UTM, so University of Toronto, Mississauga. Winner of that game, uh, we are going to be facing next week, should be? Yeah. Possibly, yeah, next week uh, in the semifinals. On the, on the 30th, 30th, that will be our semifinal game. Yeah. Stay tuned for that. We will have coverage. Hopefully, we'll be able to see all of all of the games. Uh, and yeah, stay tuned for Call of Duty. December 3rd. December 3rd, actually. So a so, little bit away here still. But I mean, regardless, just quick recap of this series. I think St. Clair did so well. And it's so funny. We talked about how they need to get ahead of early in this game to win this game. It, it didn't matter because when you have Ricky on the Darius, you can do anything and i still i'm in shock that pentacle happened like he was uh, that is so crazy the fact that he was so low in those fights that he changed it so much and i want to talk about Eok too Eok significantly behind this kindred right but built the turbo chem tank got that fimble yeah. winter fully stacked and then had that uh had that uh frozen heart and he was so effective in those fights he created so much space and was able to survive for so long there wasn't really any ability for this kindred to actually fight and, and by the time she did get in the fight darius was there with yuma on top of her and it's just so much extra damage yeah yumi diff i have to say there, i think that yeah, helped out a lot i, I really do think Go the ahead. survivability from the sorry yeah. to cut you off here the no, survivability from the yumi quite literally let them yeah. outlast the kindred ult exactly like that's what we were seeing in these fights the tanks were lasting longer than the kindred ult still with all of their cc and disruption up yeah. and, and then they were just able to finish it off from there because their kindred ult really was the like that that was their pick against the the yumi carry in the comp yeah and and i mean all credit to, to gvu and force we are gonna have to say are, is there double elimination or is it just single elimination single. Single, so they're out. So uh, I'll credit to them. I think they had a really good series, obviously, in that mm -hmm. second game. Uh, 
they definitely had an advantage there. St. Clair able to come back, but all credit to them. They had a great series, and it was a very, very exciting game to watch yesterday. Some technical issues in that first one, unfortunately, didn't get to see all of it, but both games very highly contested, and I feel like could have been won by either side. Yeah, and I, and I feel like that's just the motto of, of today, honestly, True. with preseason, the preseason patch, all of this coming out. I mean, it, luckily, players are going to have a little bit of time to adjust yeah. to these patches now before the semifinals. Uh, so hopefully by then we'll see some more concrete strategies and maybe we'll see the items develop a little bit. We'll see uh, some people who weren't building some of the new items, maybe build some of the new items, maybe take some of the new keystones. Uh, but we'll, we'll have to see. Yeah, so that is going to be it for us. We're going to wrap it up here. Um, we'll be back with COD at 8.30, so stick around. And you're going to see December 3rd is if you want to watch more NECC playoff auction. St. Clair will be in the semifinals. I'm um, not quite sure they're going to play yet, but we'll find out. We'll get it back to you as soon as we know. Check us out on Twitter. So that is going to be it. Thank you for joining me for League of Legends today. It was a lot of fun. Always a great and, time. I mean, it was very entertaining, and I loved yeah, it. Yeah, for sure. I mean, <laughs> okay, I can't disagree with you there. We are going to be heading off now, uh, so... Don't uh, go grab some water. Go grab some food. Uh, meet us back here for COD. Uh, it should also be another great series coming up. So oh, yeah. stay tuned for that. That's going to we'll be it, be though. Back.